it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and the neighbor decided he's gonna mow. That's helpful. Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to the workshop. Except again, this week we're in my backyard and the cicadas have arrived here on the East Coast. I don't know if you can hear them or not, uh, but they're definitely here. Uh, we don't have so many trees here, but across the street there's a patch of woods and they are definitely over there. So this week I'm going to start uh, tackling the rust on the trailer, taking a small break from the uh, drivetrain problems we're having. Uh, I still need to develop a game plan for how I want to machine that stuff. Uh, so with the trailer, what I'm uh, planning on doing here is trying to use the Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. Uh, this is a product that uh, you're supposed to just uh, put over top of the rust and uh, it's supposed to encapsulate it as its name says and uh, prevent additional rusting. All you have to do uh, is take a wire brush to the rust and remove anything loose first. So I've never tried it before. Uh, we'll give it a try, see how it works. Uh, if it looks like it's doing a good job, we'll do the whole trailer with it. Uh, if not, maybe we'll switch to something else along the way. So I'm going to tackle this project in a number of small areas rather than trying to do the whole trailer at once. The next step in the process, Eastwood wants you to hit it with their uh, pre-painting prep. This just removes any contaminants from the surface before applying the rust encapsulator. I think that now that I've got the solids separated from the bottom, I'm going to shake it. All right, I think we have this sufficiently shook. Start applying it and see how it looks. Just using a cheap uh, disposable chip brush here. I expect there's going to be some repairs made to the trailer, like this boss here intended for the jack. Putting the rust encapsulator on there isn't going to prevent us from grinding that off and repairing it in the future. I just want to get this thing sealed uh, to prevent the formation of more rust. This stuff goes on uh, fairly thin but it's sticky and has really good coverage. I came back here to the back of our property to uh, see if there was any evidence of cicadas in our tree line, and there's not too many back here. Uh, these are mostly uh, cedar trees. I don't know if cicadas don't like cedar or not, but uh, one thing I did discover, the last few days I've been smelling creosote, and I couldn't tell where it was coming from, and I just realized the railroad dropped off a, a whole bunch of brand new ties there. So this is a self-tapping decking screw that's uh, rusted off, broken off even with the deck. And there's actually a lot of these uh, throughout the trailer. There's not really a necessity that they come out, but it's preventing me from getting my wire brush behind here and uh, doing a good job of cleaning this. So I'm going to attempt to back these all out.
So it is a new day here, and I have to admit that I made a bit of a mistake yesterday. I had the uh, ride here parked right in the middle of my backyard, right in the direct sunlight. And in addition to killing myself in the heat, I think it had a negative impact on the rust encapsulator. The uh, rust encapsulator goes on really thin, and then it tacks up. And I think with the direct sunlight, it, it tacked up way too fast and uh, didn't really get a chance uh, to settle out and, and give it a nice surface finish. So I moved it over here into the shade today and uh, it's uh, 10 o'clock right now. It's already in the 90s with high humidity. So I think the order of the day is just going to be slow and steady and see how much of this we can get done. Yesterday I went straight from the grinding to the pre-paint prep and uh, I decided today that since it's so hot that if I were to uh, wash this down it would give the pre-paint prep a lot less work to do because it would get all the loose stuff off and I figured with as hot as it was today it would dry in no time at all so it really wouldn't affect my progress here. I'm just wiping off the last little bit of water here to encourage it to finish flashing off and then we'll hit it with the pre-paint prep and uh, put the rust encapsulator on it. So with all this prepared I believe we have about a quarter or maybe a fifth of the trailer ready to go and uh, that's actually pretty good because even though this is only a, a quarter or maybe slightly less it represents the largest amount of work to be done due to having to work around all this framework in here. The rest of the trailer is much less involved. So obviously I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict how this will hold up. I can talk about the application process though and my thoughts on the product. The rust encapsulator has a water-like consistency. It's almost like a stain. It flows real nice and I feel like it gets good coverage because it can seep into all the nooks and crannies my paintbrush might miss. It goes on like a stain but then it tacks up like a paint and creates a much thicker coat than I expected. The Eastwood rust encapsulator application process is much simpler than some of the competing rust prevention products on the market so I really like that. You just brush off the loose scale, hit it with the pre-paint prep, wipe that off and paint. I also like that it doesn't require a top coat, although you certainly can top coat it, you don't need to. The only negative that I discovered is that when trying to paint the underside of the trailer, because the rust encapsulator is so thin, it wanted to run down the handle of the brush and all over my hands. Eastwood offers the rust encapsulator in an aerosol, so I'm going to grab some of that specifically for hitting the underside. Another issue I ran into was with the Eastwood website. I attempted to order the aerosol version and the website was telling me that I had to reset my password. So I clicked that link, but I never received the reset email. So I tried to create a new account, but it told me that email address was already in use. So I just gave up for the time being. And there goes a, <laughs> a double bladed helicopter. We've got, we got the guy over there mowing. We got the, uh, the twin prop helicopter going by got the locusts all around us and any moment I expect uh, a whole uh, biker gang to go down the street 